Hey everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to crochet these cute basic teddy bears. So for these bears you will need a 4mm crochet hook and DK weight yarn. So thank you very much for watching and please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more crochet videos. And please press the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on new uploads. So we are going to start off by making the first leg and to begin the leg you want to make a magic circle. So to do a magic circle take your yarn and take your finger and wrap the yarn around your finger once and you then want to wrap the yarn back over your finger to create a cross like that. You then want to take your crochet hook and go underneath the first loop of the cross and you may need to pull it up a little bit but go underneath this first loop and then using your crochet hook pick up the second loop of the cross and pull it through and you can then take your finger out and there we have a magic circle and we are ready to begin round one. So to begin round one you want to chain one and this chain one does not count as a stitch, this just locks our magic circle into place. So now in round one we are going to do six single crochets into the magic circle. So six single crochets. So you want to go down into the magic circle, yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. So there we have one single crochet into the magic circle and now we're going to do the same thing again. So there we have a second one and keep going until you have six. like that. So there we have worked one, two, three, four, five, six. And now to finish off round one, we need to close up our magic circle. So to close up the magic circle, you want to take this end or this tail here from where we made our magic circle at the beginning, and you simply want to pull this nice and tight. And there we have closed up the magic circle, and we have finished round one, and we can move on to round two. So in round two, we are going to work two single crochets into every single stitch. So you want to go down into this first stitch here from round one, and if you're not sure which stitch to go into, then you can count back six stitches. So you can count back one, two, three, four, five, six, and you want to go down into this stitch and work your first single crochet. So like that, so there we have our first single crochet into that one. And now before you work your second single crochet into that stitch, you want to take a stitch marker. And if you don't have one of these, you can just use another piece of yarn in a different color or a safety pin. And we're going to place this marker into that stitch that we just worked. So place it into that first single crochet. And the reason that we are doing this is throughout our teddy bear, we are not going to be working any slip stitches. So we are not going to be working a slip stitch at the end of the round. So we're going to be working in continuous rounds or working in a spiral. So we need to use a stitch marker to mark the first stitch of the round, and then we can work all the way around. And when we reach the stitch marker, we know that we have come to the end of that round and it's time to move on to the next one. So there we have done our first single crochet into that stitch for round two and we have marked that stitch and now we need to work our second single crochet back down into that same stitch. So I'm going to go down into that same stitch and work a second single crochet and now we are going to do two into the next one. Like that and then two single crochets into the next stitch and just continue to work that all the way around.
So I have finished working that all the way around for round two. And at the end of that round, you should have 12 single crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And we have reached our stitch marker. And now we can move on to round three. So to begin round three, you want to remove your stitch marker. And we are going to go down into this first stitch and work two single crochets. So you want to go down into the stitch and work your first one. And then you want to take your stitch marker and place it into that stitch as it is the first stitch of round three. Like that. And then you want to go back down into that same stitch and work the second single crochet. And now into this next stitch, you just want to work one single crochet. And we're just going to repeat that all the way around for round three. You want to do two single crochets into the next stitch and then one single crochet into the next, then two into the next and one into the next all the way around. So we're going to do two into this next one So two single crochets and then one single crochet into the next and just keep repeating that for round three. finished working that all the way around for round three and I have reached my stitch marker so I know I have come to the end of that round and at the end of that round you should have 18 single crochets and now we can move on to round four of the first leg so to begin this round you want to remove the stitch marker and we are going to start off by working two single crochets into the first stitch so go down into this first one and do two single crochets. So there's one and then place the stitch marker into the first one. And then do the second one into that same stitch. And then you want to do one single crochet into the next stitch. And then one single crochet into the next one like that and we're going to repeat this all the way around you want to do two single crochets into the next stitch and then one into the next and one into the next then two one one two one one all the way around That I have come to the end of round four and at the end of that round you should have 24 single crochets and it's really important that you have that number so I would recommend that you quickly go back and just double check that you do have 24 and if you do we can move on to round five. So we are now on to round five of the first leg of our little teddy bear and for each of the next 12 rounds we are just going to work one single crochet into each stitch. So we are going to do 12 rounds of plain single crochet. So you'll do that all the way around for round five, then six, then seven, then eight, all the way up to the end of round 16. So to begin each round you want to remove your stitch marker and then you want to do one single crochet into the first stitch and then place the stitch marker into that first stitch of the round and it's really really important that you always make sure that you're using your stitch marker correctly so that you're always placing it into the first single crochet of every round and then you want to do one single crochet into the next stitch and then the next and the next and just keep doing that all the way around one single crochet into each stitch and then when you reach the stitch marker you know you have come to the end of that round and it's time to move on to the next one and then you'll do the same thing so for round six you'd remove the stitch marker 
work the first single crochet into that stitch, placing the stitch marker back down into that first stitch of the round, and then do one single crochet into each stitch. So you want to do that for 12 rounds. And in each round that you do, you should find that you still have 24 single crochets. So then once you have done that, this is what you should have. So I have come to the end of round 16, so I have worked all of those rounds of plain single crochet. And then when you get to the end of your very last round, you want to fasten off. So pull your yarn out and your hook, leaving a long tail to weave in later. And then I have just pulled this yarn through this next stitch. So I'll show you how I did that. So I finished off like this at the end of round 16. And then I just went into the next stitch from the outside in and then just pulled that yarn through just to bring that end through to the outside of the leg and to make the top a little bit more even. So there we have finished our first leg. So you should have 16 rounds in total. And then once you have done that, so you have finished the first leg and you have fastened off, you want to go ahead and make a second leg in the exact same way. So the second leg is going to be exactly the same and you can go back in the tutorial and watch all of those rounds again. So you want to start off with the magic circle, then you want to do rounds one, two, three and four, exactly the same, and then do those 12 rounds of plain single crochet. So you want to make a second leg in the exact same way. So here I have done that second leg. So like I said, you can go back in the tutorial and rewatch all of those rounds, or if you have the written pattern, it's all written down on there for you. So you want to make the second leg. The only difference with this leg is that when you get to the very end of the last round, you do not want to fasten off. So do not fasten off at the end of round 16 of the second leg. So here we have our two legs. We have the first one here and then the second one, which is still attached to the ball. And now before we move on to round one of the body, we need to add a little bit of stuffing to these legs. So here I have some stuffing and I am just using polyester toy stuffing. And you want to add a little bit of stuffing to each one. And before you stuff them, it's really important to make sure that this end from where we made the magic circle has been pulled through to the outside. So make sure that the end from the very beginning is on the outside. So go ahead and add a bit of stuffing to each leg. So I have gone ahead and added some stuffing to each leg and you don't want to overstuff them. So you don't want to have it where the um, stitching is too stretched out. You just want to add a little bit to each leg and you can always add some more as we go on. But the main important thing is that you get some stuffing down here to the very bottom while you still can. So there we have stuffed the legs and now we can move on to round one of the body and in this round we are going to join the legs together and move on to our Teddy's little tummy. So you want to start off where you finished off on that second leg. So here we have the leg which is still attached to the ball like this. So I have come to the end of round 16 here and I have already removed my stitch marker. So my stitch marker was here but I just quickly removed it when I stuffed the legs as it can get caught up in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by working 12 single crochets. So you want to go down into the first stitch and work one single crochet and we're going to add our stitch marker into this stitch. Like that. And then you want to keep going, working one single crochet into each stitch until you have 12. And that should take you halfway around the leg. So like that, so there I have done those 12 single crochets and that has taken me halfway around. And now you want to chain one. So we're going to chain one 
And now we're going to go into our other leg. So you want to take the first leg here and we are going to work a single crochet into one of these stitches. And it doesn't matter which stitch you choose, you can choose any one that you like, but I'm going to go with this one here. So one just before, a few stitches before where we finished off. And that way where we finished off here and this end is going to be on the back of my bear, which is what I want. So I'm going to choose a few stitches before where we fastened off so I'm going to go into this one and just insert your hook into that stitch and work a single crochet as you normally would so it's really easy to join them we did 12 single crochets chain one and then choose any random stitch of the other leg and work a single crochet into that one and there we have made our first join between these two legs and now you just want to work single crochets, one into each stitch, around this other leg, so around the first leg that we worked. And you should find that that is 24 in total with this first one that we have just worked. So I'm going to work one into the next stitch, and one into the next, and one into the next, and keep doing this all the way around. And when you get to where you fastened off at the end of round 16, you need to be really careful here that you don't work too many stitches. So I have done one down into that single crochet, and then I'm going to do one down into this next single crochet here. But the best way to do it is just when you get to the end of this leg and you have reached here, so you reach the first stitch that you worked into, the best thing to do is to go back and double check that you did work 24 single crochets and not 23 or 25 or anything like that. So to go back and double check that you did do 24. So continue working single crochets, one into each stitch around this second leg until you reach where you just worked your first single crochet there. So until you reach the last stitch that has not been worked into. So I have worked single crochets all the way around that leg and I have reached the first single crochet that I worked into that leg there. And I went back and double checked that I did work 24 and I did. So now we are going to work our second join along this side. So what you want to do is you want to chain one and then we are going to go back to the first leg that we were working into and we have a single crochet into this stitch here. So now we are going to go down into the next stitch. So this is the first stitch that has not been worked into in this other leg. So we have a single crochet into this one. So we're going to go into the next one and work one single crochet into this stitch. So just as we did before, you're doing single crochet, chain one, and then a single crochet into the stitch on the other leg. And now you want to just work single crochets, one into each stitch, until you reach where you started. So until you reach your stitch marker. And you should find that that is 12 more single crochets in total for this half of this leg. And then with the 12 that we worked at the beginning of the round, that will be 24 around this leg as well. So there I have finished working those single crochets and I have reached my stitch marker where I started. And there we have finished round one and we have joined our legs. So we have finished round one of the body and we have joined. And at the end of that round, you should have 50 stitches. And they, that includes the two chains that we have here. So we have 24 around each leg, which two of them makes 48. And then we have the two chains, which brings it up to 50. So you should have 50 stitches in total. And I would recommend that you go back and double check that you do have that number. And if you do, we're ready to move on to round two of the body. So to begin round two, you want to remove your stitch marker. And we're going to start off by working two single crochets into this first stitch here. So you want to do your first one into that stitch and then place the stitch marker into that stitch. So place it into the first single crochet of the round. And then you want to work your second single crochet down into this same stitch like that. 
and now you want to do one single crochet into each of the next nine stitches. So we are doing nine single crochets. So do one into the next, and then one into the next, and the third one along, and keep going until you have nine. So like that, so there I have those nine single crochets and this round can be a little bit awkward to work as we have these legs here, but after a few rounds that goes away. So we have two single crochets into the first stitch and then one single crochet into each of the next nine and we're going to keep repeating that all the way around for round two. So we'll do two single crochets into the next stitch and then one single crochet into each of the next nine stitches and just keep repeating that all the way around and you should find that you do that four more times before you reach the end. And when you're working into these little chains, so we have two chains to work into, they can be really quite tricky to get into as the stitches are quite tiny, but just persevere with it and try to get into them as best you can. And if you really are struggling, then you can always, just for that one stitch, go down to a smaller crochet hook. So go down to a 3.5 millimeter hook and then work that single crochet really loosely using, using that hook and then go back to using your normal size hook after you've finished working in that chain. But that only do that if you're really, really finding it tricky to get down into that little chain. So work two single crochets into the one stitch and then one single crochet into nine stitches all the way around. finished working that all the way around for round two of the body so I have reached my stitch marker and at the end of that round you should have 55 single crochets and I would recommend that you go back and double check that you do have 55 and if you do we're ready to move on to round three. So we are now on to round three and for the next 12 rounds, so for rounds three all the way up to the end of round 14 of the body, you just want to do one single crochet into each stitch. So just like we did down here, we are going to do 12 rounds of plain single crochet. So to begin each round, you'll remove the stitch marker and then work one single crochet into that first stitch, placing the stitch marker back into that stitch and then do one single crochet into each stitch around until you reach where you started. And in each round, you should have 55 single crochets. So you'll do that all the way around for round three, then four, five, six, seven, up to the end of round 14. And it's really important to make sure that you keep using your stitch marker. So it's really important that you keep using that stitch marker correctly. And I would also recommend that you keep a note of what round you are on. And if you have the written pattern, I have a little chart on there where you can tick off which round you are on. So it's really easy to keep track. So go ahead and work 12 rounds of plain single crochet. So I'm going to start round three, which is the first round. So I'm going to remove the marker, work one single crochet into the first stitch and place the stitch marker into that stitch. And then I'm going to do one single crochet into the next stitch. and one into the next and keep doing that all the way around for 12 rounds and don't worry about adding any stuffing to your work just yet we will do that once we start decreasing a little bit more at the top so work 12 rounds of plain single crochet finished working all of those rounds so I have come to the end of round 14 and at the end of that round this is what you should have so we have lots of rounds of just plain single crochet for the main part here and now we can move on to round 15 so to begin this round you want to remove your stitch marker And we are going to start off by working nine single crochets or one single crochet into each of the first nine stitches. 
So do one into this first one, placing the stitch marker into that stitch. Then do one single crochet into the next stitch and the third one and keep going until you have nine. So like that. So there we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine single crochets. And now we are going to do a stitch called two single crochets together over the next two stitches. And when we do two single crochets together, we are doing two single crochets, one into each stitch, but we are not going to complete either of them. And then we're going to complete them both together at the same time. So we're going to be turning two stitches into one. So you want to go down into the next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. So start a single crochet, but usually we would yarn over and pull through these two loops here, but you do not want to do that. You want to stop here and move on to the next one. So we're going to move on to the next single crochet. So go into the next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop, but do not complete this single crochet either. So there we have done two incomplete single crochets and you should have three loops on your hook and you want to yarn over and pull through all three. So there we have done two single crochets together and we have turned two stitches into one. And we're just going to repeat this all the way around for round 15. You want to do nine single crochets and then two single crochets together over the next two stitches then nine single crochets and two single crochets together over the next two stitches all the way around. So we're going to do nine more single crochets. So like that and then we're going to do two single crochets together over the next two stitches. So go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, then go into the next one and yarn over and pull up a loop. So there we have two incomplete single crochets and now yarn over and pull through all three and just keep repeating that for this round. So we have finished working that all the way around. So we have reached our stitch marker. So you should have done two single crochets together over those last two stitches. And at the end of that round, you should now have 50 stitches. So we have gone down from 55 to 50. So we have started to decrease. And now we can move on to round 16. So round 16 is just a simple round of single crochet. So you just want to remove your stitch marker, work one single crochet into the first stitch, place the stitch marker back into that stitch, and then work one single crochet into each stitch around until you reach your stitch marker. And you should find that you work 50 single crochets in that round. So do that for round 16.
So there I have come to the end of round 16, so I worked that all the way around and like I said you should now have 50 single crochets and now we can move on to round 17 and round 17 is another decrease round so you want to start off by removing your stitch marker and we are going to start off by doing 8 single crochets this time so do 1 into each of the first 8 So like that, so there we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight single crochets. And now over the next two stitches, you want to work two single crochets together, just as we did before. And we're just going to repeat this all the way around for round 17. You want to do eight single crochets, then two single crochets together, then eight single crochets, two single crochets together, all the way around. So there we have finished working that all the way around for round 17. So we did two single crochets together over these last two stitches. And at the end of that round, you should now have 45 stitches. So we have decreased by five stitches again. And now we can move on to round 18. And round 18 is just another round of plain single crochet. So you just want to do one single crochet into each stitch as we have done lots and lots of times before and you should have 45 single crochets in that round. So work that for round 18. So there I have finished round 18 and we can now move on to round 19. So round 19 is another decrease round. So you want to start off by removing your stitch marker, which I have already done. And then we're going to do seven single crochets. So do one into the first one, placing the marker back into this stitch. And then keep going until you have seven. So like that and now you want to do two single crochets together over the next two stitches so work two single crochets together and you just want to keep repeating that all the way around for round 19 seven single crochets then two single crochets together seven single crochets two single crochets together all the way around. Like that, so I have finished working that all the way around for round 19. And at the end of that round, you should have 40 stitches. And now round 20, you can probably guess what we're going to do. We're going to work another round of plain single crochet. So for round 20, you just want to do one single crochet into each stitch. And you should find that there are 40 single crochets in that round. So go ahead and work that. So there we have come to the end of round 20 and like I said you should have 40 single crochets and now before we move on to the next round you just want to go ahead and add a little bit of stuffing to, the, to this part here so the part just above the legs so I haven't added it all the way up to the top where we just finished working I just made sure that I was able to get some stuffing down here just after the legs before we went any further and now we can move on to round 21 and this round is another decrease round so we're going to start off by doing six single crochets
just like that. So there we have six. And now you want to do two single crochets together over the next two stitches. And we're just going to keep repeating that all the way around for round 21. You want to do six single crochets, then two single crochets together all the way around. So I have finished working that all the way around for round 21. So I did two single crochets together over these last two stitches. And at the end of that round, you should have 35 stitches around. And now we can move on to round 22. So round 22 is going to be another decrease round. So we're not going to do a round of plain single crochet here. We're going to go straight on to another decrease round for round 22. And in this round, we're following the same pattern, but instead of doing six single crochets and then two single crochets together all the way around, we're going to do five single crochets and then two single crochets together all the way around. So you want to work five single crochets. So like that, so there we have those five single crochets and now you want to do two single crochets together over these next two. And if it looks like I'm struggling to get into my stitches, I'm not. I just like to have really tight tension when I am making these little bears. So there we have done five single crochets and then two single crochets together over the next two stitches. And just keep repeating that all the way around. Five single crochets, two single crochets together. So we have come to the end of round 22, so I worked that all the way around and at the end of that round you should have 30 stitches and this is our last decrease round, so this is going to be the smallest part of our teddy bear, so we are going to stop decreasing now. So you want to go ahead and add a little bit more stuffing to the body of your bear. So I have just added some more stuffing and made sure that there are no dips in the bear, so sometimes if you have a little spot where you don't have any stuffing it can kind of dip in so make sure that you don't have any of those dips around the bottom here so you can actually see I have a little dip here so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more stuffing to that part before I move on to the next round. So like that and now we can move on to round 23. So we are now on to round 23 and for the next two rounds, so for rounds 23 and 24, we're just going to do one single crochet into each stitch and this is going to make our little teddy bear's neck. So we're going to do two rounds of plain single crochet and in each of those two rounds you should find that you have 30 stitches. So go ahead and work those two rounds of one single crochet into each stitch. So remove the stitch marker, work a single crochet into the first stitch, placing the stitch marker into that one, work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around and then when you get to the end do the exact same thing again for round 24. So two rounds of plain single crochet. So I have finished working those two rounds so I have come to the end of round 24 and this is what you should have. And now we can move on to round 25, which is the first round in which we're going to be starting to increase for the head. So what you want to do is you want to start off by working five single crochets or one single crochet into each of the first five stitches. So we're going to remove the stitch marker. A bit fiddly. And now we're going to do one single crochet into the first stitch, placing the marker back down into that one. And then one into each stitch until you have done five. Lovely. 
like that. And now you want to do two single crochets into the next stitch. So into this next one here, you want to do two single crochets. So do one, and then a second one. And we're just going to keep repeating that all the way around for round 25. You want to do one single crochet into five stitches, then two single crochets into the next, then one single crochet into five more stitches, and two single crochets both into the next, all the way around. So we're going to be increasing and making our work a little bit bigger for the start of the head. So I have finished working that all the way around for round 25. So I did two single crochets into that last stitch at the end. And at the end of that round, you should have 35 stitches. So we have gone up from 30 to 35. So we've increased by five stitches. And now we can move on to round 26. And round 26 is just another round of plain single crochet. So you just want to do one single crochet into every stitch for round 26 and you should find that that is 35 single crochets in total. So go ahead and work that round. So I have come to the end of that round and like I said, you should have 35 single crochets and now we can move on to round 27. And this round is another increase round that follows the same pattern as before, but instead of doing five single crochets and then two into the next all the way around, we are going to do six single crochets and then two single crochets into the next stitch all the way around for round 27. So start off by working one single crochet into each of the first six stitches. So like that, so there we have two, four, six, and now into the next stitch you want to work two single crochets both into this one. And just keep reworking that, keep repeating that all the way around for round 27. So like that, so I have finished round 27 and at the end of that round you should find that you worked 40 stitches and it's a good idea just to go back every now and again and just double check that you have the right number around. And now we can move on to round 28 and this round is just a round of plain single crochet. So for round 28 just work one single crochet into each stitch and you should find that that is 40 in total. We have come to the end of round 28, so that was just plain single crochet, and now we can move on to round 29. And this is going to be our last increase round for the head. And what we're going to do is we're going to do one single crochet into seven stitches, and then two single crochets into the next stitch, all the way around for this round. So start off by working seven single crochets. And then you want to do two single crochets into this next stitch. And just keep repeating that all the way around. We have reached the end of round 29 and at the end of that round you should have 45 single crochets and I would recommend that you quickly go back and double check that you do have that number. And now we can move on to round 30. 
So for the next eight rounds, so for rounds 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 and 37, so eight rounds, you just want to do one single crochet into each stitch. So you'll start off by removing the stitch marker, work one single crochet into the first stitch, place the stitch marker back down into that one and work one single crochet into every stitch until you reach where you started. So you'll do that all the way around for round 30, 31, 32, up to the end of round 37. And in each round that you do, you should find that you have 45 single crochets. And I would recommend you keep a note of what round you're on, or if you have the written pattern, I have a little chart on there so you can keep track of what round you're on. And it's really important that you keep using your stitch marker correctly. So always place it into the first stitch of every round and move it with each round that you do. So go ahead and work those eight rounds of plain single crochet. And this is going to form the main part of the head. And you don't need to worry about adding any more stuffing to the bear at this point, as we are not getting any smaller. Um, I would add it when you start decreasing as it's much easier to work when you don't have the stuffing there. So do those eight rounds. So I have finished working all of those rounds, so I have come to the end of round 37. So this is what you should have, so you can see we have finished the main part of the head. And now we can move on to round 38. And round 38 is going to be the first decrease round of the head. So just like we did up here for the top of the body section, round 38 is going to be a decrease round. So we are going to do one single crochet into seven stitches and then two single crochets together all the way around. So start off by doing seven single crochets So there's seven and now we're going to do two single crochets together just as we have done before over these next two stitches and just keep working that all the way around for this round. So like that, so there I have come to the end of that round and you should have 40 stitches at the end here. So we have gone down from 45 to 40, so we've started decreasing. And now for round 39, we're just going to do a round of plain single crochet. So you just want to do one single crochet into every single stitch for round 39. we have finished round 39 and now we can move on to round 40. So I have already removed my stitch marker and round 40 is another decrease round and we're going to be following the same pattern as we just did before in round 38 but in round 40 we're going to be doing six single crochets and then two single crochets together over the next two stitches. So start off by doing your six single crochets There's five and then six. And then you want to work two single crochets together over the next two. And just keep repeating this all the way around. Six single crochets, two single crochets together for round 40.
So there I have finished round 40 and at the end of that round you should have 35 stitches. And now we can move on to round 41 and we're going to be going straight into another decrease round. So we're not doing a round of plain single crochet here. Round 41 is another decrease round and we're following the same pattern but in this round instead of doing six single crochets and then two single crochets together all the way around, for round 41 you want to do five single crochets and then two single crochets together all the way around. So you'll start off by doing one single crochet into each of the first five stitches then two single crochets together over the next two and repeat that all the way around. So I have finished working that all the way around for round 41 and at the end of that round you should have 30 stitches. And then I went ahead and added the stuffing to the head and you need to make sure that when you add the stuffing that you get right down here into the neck and that you stuff it evenly and that there are none of those dips that I was mentioning earlier. So there are no dips where you don't have any stuffing so you can see I could probably add a little bit more in the back there but you also want to make sure that you don't overstuff it and that you can see the stuffing through the stitches. So then once you have done that, so you have finished round 41 and started to stuff the head, we can move on to round 42 which is another decrease round and we're going to do three single crochets and then two single crochets together all the way around for this round. So start off with those three single crochets. like that, so one, two, three, and now do two single crochets together over the next two. And just keep repeating that for round 42. Okay, so like that, so I've reached the end of that round and you should have 24 stitches. And now we can move on to round 43. And this round follows the same pattern, it's another decrease round, but instead of doing three single crochets and then two single crochets together all the way around, you want to do two single crochets and then two single crochets together around for this round. So you'll do one, one, two together, one, one, two together, all the way around for round 43. So it's the same, I won't show you again because we've done it lots of times, but go ahead and work that for that round. Two single crochets and then two single crochets together repeated. We have reached the end of round 43 and you should have 18 stitches at this point. So 18 stitches around. And then you want to go ahead and add a little bit more stuffing to the head. So I have just stuffed that last round there and added a little bit more down the bottom so it's a bit firmer. And now we can move on to round 44 which is our second to last round. So this round follows the same pattern but instead of doing two single crochets and then two single crochets together, we're going to do just one single crochet and then two single crochets together all the way around. So remove the marker. Work the single crochet into that first stitch there, placing the marker back into that stitch. And now we're going to do two single crochets together over the next two. So there we have done one single crochet, then two single crochets together, and just keep repeating that for round 44. I 
finished working that all the way around for round 44 and at the end of that round you should have 12 stitches and I have gone and added a little bit more stuffing to the top of the head there and at this point you want to make sure that you have added all of the stuffing so that the head is exactly the way you want it as the next round we're pretty much going to be closing it up so you won't be able to add any more to the head. So make sure that it's the way that you like it. So I need a little bit more here. So I'm going to just add a tiny bit more in that section. So there I have it as I want it. And now we can move on to round 45, which is the final round of the main part of our bear. It's the final part of the head. So for this round, we're just going to be working sets of two single crochets together all the way around. And we are going to do that six times. So I have already removed my stitch marker. So now we're going to work two single crochets together over the first two. And if you like, you could place a stitch marker into that stitch, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to count. So we're going to do six sets of two single crochets together. So there I have my first one, and now I'm going to do my second one. And then third. And fourth, fifth, and then finally sixth. So you want to do six of them in total. So like that, so I have done that six times. And then once you have done that, you want to fasten off. So pull your yarn out and your hook and cut your yarn. And when you cut your yarn, make sure you leave a nice long tail end as we can use this to sew up the top of the head. And then once you have done that, you want to add a final little bit of stuffing to that last round. So just try and get a little bit down in through that hole and you can use the end of your hook to kind of jam it down into there. And then the very last thing that we need to do is sew up the top. So you want to take a yarn needle and thread that long end that you just left through the needle. And we are going to sew the top of this head together. So what we're going to do is we're going to weave the needle in through these stitches. So there should be six stitches at the top here and we're going to weave the needle through each of them. So go in through the first stitch, trying to make sure that you do not pick up any stuffing and pull the needle, pull the yarn through. And then you want to go into the next stitch, but this time we're going to go from the inside out. And then we're going to go into the next stitch and we're going to go from the outside in. And then this next one, you want to go from the inside out. And then outside in. And then finally inside out. So there we have weaved the end and the needle through all six of those stitches. And then to finish it off, simply pull it tight and that will close up that end. And now you can weave this end nice and securely into the top of the head. So go through these stitches back and forth to make sure it's nice and secure. And then you can weave the end into the head. And then you want to do the same thing on the bottom here. Pull these tight and weave those ends in nice and securely and then weave them into the inside. So like that. So there we have finished the main part. So we have the legs, the body, the neck and the head and you need to sew up this little gap here so just using a piece of yarn and your yarn needle just do a couple of stitches to sew that up. So there we have finished the body and now we can move on to the arms and the ears. So we have finished making the main part of our bear so we have done the legs, the body and the head and now we can move on and make the ears and we have two ears and they are both made in the exact same way so I'll show you how to do one and then you can go ahead and make the second one in the exact same way. 
So to begin the ear, you want to start off by making a magic circle. And this is the same thing that we did at the very beginning for the legs. So you want to take your yarn and take your finger and make a cross around your finger. Then take your crochet hook, go underneath the first loop of the cross, pick up the second loop, pull it through and chain one. So there we have made a magic circle in the same way as we did before. And for round one of the ears, you want to do six single crochets into the magic circle. So six single crochets. So like that, so there I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And now to finish off round one, you want to close up your magic circle by pulling this tail end as tight as you can. And there we have finished round one and we're ready to move on to round two. So for round two, we're just going to do two single crochets into each stitch. So you want to go to this first stitch that we worked, so the first single crochet from last round and do two single crochets and remember to place a stitch marker into the first one that you worked. So I have done two into that stitch so I'm going to place my stitch marker into the first single crochet that I worked and just continue working this all the way around. You want to do two single crochets both into this next one. and two into the next and just repeat for round two so like that so I have reached the end of that round and you should have 12 single crochets at the end of round two and now we can move on to round three so to begin this round remove your stitch marker and we are going to do three single crochets or one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. So do one into this first stitch here, placing the stitch marker into that one. And now do one single crochet into the next stitch and then one into the third one along. So there we have three single crochets and now we're going to do two single crochets both down into this next stitch here. So do two into this next one. And you want to keep repeating that all the way around for round three. You want to do three single crochets, then two into the next, then three single crochets and two into the next all the way around. Okay, so like that. So there I have come to the end of round three and you should have 15 single crochets. And now we can move on to round four. So for the next four rounds of our ear, so for rounds four, five, six and seven, so four rounds, you just want to do one single crochet into each stitch. And you should find that in each round you do 15 single crochets. So for round four, you'll remove the stitch marker, work one single crochet into the first stitch, place the stitch marker back down into that one, then you'll do one single crochet into each stitch around, and then when you reach the stitch marker, you know you have come to the end of the round and you can move on to the next round. 
So you want to do that all the way around for rounds four, five, six, and so I have finished working all of those rounds. So I have come to the end of round seven and we have finished our ear. We just need to close it up. So what you want to do is when you get to the end of round seven is fasten off and make sure that you leave a nice long tail end as we can use this to sew our ear together and then sew it to the head. And then you want to remove your stitch marker and pull the yarn through. And then you want to take your yarn needle, the same one that we used before, and we're going to sew our ear together using the whip stitch. And now before you do that, you need to make sure that this end from the magic circle has been pulled through to the outside. And we're going to go in through one stitch and then through to the same stitch on the opposite side and pull the yarn through. And then with the whip stitch, we always come back around to the same side and go in through the next stitch and the same stitch on the opposite side there and pull the yarn through. And then we're going to do the same thing in through the next stitch and the same stitch on the opposite side and pull the yarn through. And keep doing this all the way along. So there we have sewn up our ear. So we do not add any stuffing to the ear. You just want to work the whip stitch all the way along. And now, like I said, you want to go ahead and make a second one of these, and then you can put them aside and move on to the arms. So to begin the arms, you want to start off by doing the same thing as the ears. You want to do a magic circle. like that and now we are going to do six single crochets so for round one you want to do six single crochets into the magic circle and then close up the magic circle by pulling this tail end nice and tight so there we have finished round one of the arms and now you want to move on to round two. So for round two, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the ears. We're going to do two single crochets into each stitch. So go down into this first stitch from round one here and do two single crochets and place a stitch marker into the first one that you worked. So the first single crochet of round two. And just keep working this all the way around, two single crochets into each stitch. Like that, so I have finished working that all the way around for round two of the arm, and you should have 12 single crochets. And now we can move on to round three. So to begin round three, you want to remove your stitch marker and we are going to do two single crochets into this first stitch, placing the stitch marker into the first one that you worked. And then you want to do one single crochet into the next stitch. And we're just going to keep repeating this all the way around. Work two single crochets into the next stitch then one single crochet into the next, then two into the next, and one into the next, all the way around to one, two, one. So I have finished working that all the way around for round three, and at the end of that round, you should have 18 stitches. And we can now move on to round four. So for the next 10 rounds of the arm, so for rounds four, five, six, seven, all the way up to the end of round 13, so 10 rounds, you just want to do one single crochet into each stitch. And in each round, you should have 18 single crochets and that'll form the length of the arm. So do 10 rounds of plain single crochet and you may want to keep note of what round you're on or if you have the written pattern, I will have the little chart on there which you can tick off as you go. So work those rounds.
So there we have finished those rounds. So I have come to the end of round 13. And if you wanted longer arms, then this is where you would work a few more extra rounds of plain single crochet to get that extra little bit of length if you wanted. And now we're going to move on to round 14 of the arm. And this is the one and only decrease round in the arm. So I have just made it so that the pattern decreases just a little bit at the top of the arm to make it a little bit easier to sew to the body and to give it a tiny bit more shape. So for round 14, we're going to do four single crochets and then two single crochets together all the way around. So you want to start off by working one single crochet into each of the first four stitches. So like that. And now you want to do two single crochets together over the next two stitches, just as we have done many times before. And just keep repeating that. Four single crochets, two single crochets together all the way around. So like that, so I have come to the end of round 14 and you should have 15 stitches at the end of that round. So we have cut out three stitches and now we can move on to round 15, which is the final round of the arm. And in this round, we're just going to do one single crochet into each stitch. So you want to do one in every single stitch and you should find that that is 15 single crochets. So work that for round 15. So I have finished working that all the way around. So I came to the end of round 15. And then when I got to the end of that round, I fastened off. So I pulled my yarn out and my hook and cut my yarn, leaving a long tail as we're going to use this tail end to sew up the arm and then also sew it to the body. So you need to make sure that you leave a pretty long tail end. And now before we finish the arm, so before we sew it up, we need to add some stuffing. And before you do that, you need to make sure that this end from the start has been pulled through to the outside. And we're going to take some of our stuffing and add it to the arm. And now you do not want to over stuff the arms at all. So what I have done is I have added a little bit of stuffing to the bottom. But I have actually left the top of the arm empty. So I have not added any stuffing to these last few rounds at the top. And that just makes it a lot easier to sew the arms to the body. And it also means that they lie flat. So they lie pretty flat to the body and they don't stick right up. If you were to add stuffing all the way up here, the arms would really stick up out the side. So if you wanted that, then you could do it. But I like to leave the top few rounds empty, so I don't like to stuff them. So add some stuffing to the arm, and then we're going to sew up the top of the arm using the whip stitch. So thread that long end through your yarn needle and do the same thing as we did for the ear. Work the whip stitch all the way along to sew it together. So once you have finished working the whip stitch all the way along, you want to leave that end attached here. So do not cut this end off as we're going to use that to sew the arm to the body. And you then want to go ahead and make a second arm. So then once you have done that, you will have finished all of the parts of your bear. So we have the main parts here with the body, with the legs and the tummy and the head. And then you have two ears and two arms. And then we can go ahead and sew them together. And now there are lots of different ways that you can sew them together. And it's definitely not my strong point. I'm not all that great at sewing them together. But if you just take your time with it, it seems to work out fine. So this is how I sewed mine together. So you want to use a yarn needle and preferably try and use quite a small sharp needle to sew them together. And that will make it a lot easier. And you want to take the end here so start off by sewing the arm to the body 
So take this long end that we left when we finished the whip stitch and you want to place it where you want it on the body. So this is my bear and this is where I have sewn the arm to the body. I have sewn it in the centre in line with the head like that just below the neck. So we have these few rows here for the neck and I have sewn it just there around that row. And the little tip would be to fasten it onto this side. So pull the yarn through and fasten it there and then line up this other side exactly where you want it to go. And then you can either pin that or you can take a piece of yarn to secure it in on that side. And that way the arm won't be moving about and you can keep on track when sewing it together. And you want to go from the arm down into the body, then up back through, through to the arm, to the body, to the arm, to the body, all the way along using your yarn needle and this end from where we fastened off. And then when you get to the end, you can just make a few stitches on the edge here to secure it. And then what I did was I went underneath and I just made a few little stitches on the bottom. So underneath the arm, as I just pulled that end through and made a few little stitches underneath the arm here to secure it so that it's nice and flat to the body. I didn't want my arm sticking out too much, so just by putting a stitch here and a stitch here, that keeps the arm down nice and flat. And then you want to do the same for the other arm on the side here. So you can see this is the positioning that I have gone with a few rows below the neck and right in the center. And again, I just attached it on this side. So I went through with my needle and then I worked out where I wanted the other side to go and I just secured it there. And I just secured it there with a little pin or you could use a safety pin or you could just do a few stitches on that side to secure it. And then I worked all the way along with my end. And then when I got to the end, I went underneath and did a few stitches to secure it. And there we have sewn arms to the body and then you want to go ahead and sew the ears and I would definitely recommend doing the arms before you do the ears so that you make sure you sew the ears on right. So you want to sew on the ears and I have sewn my ears on my two different bears on in different places. So you can see with these ears I have sewn them more on the side of the head and then with these ears I sewed them more central at the top. So you could do it whatever way you liked. If you like the look of them being on the side more, then you can do that. And if you want them being on the top of the head more, you can do them that way. And you want to sew them on in the same way as you did with the arms. You want to use your, the needle and then the end from where you fastened off and then lay them exactly where you want them. So I have put mine a little bit towards the back. So in the center and then maybe just one stitch or so towards the back more just so that they're not too far forward and I just secured it on one side and then secured it on the other and then went with my needle and that end from the ear to the head to from the ear to the head all the way along and then when I got to the end I did a little stitch to secure it and then weave that end nice and securely into the inside of my bear. So that is how you sew the ears and the arms to your bear. And like I said, it's definitely not my strong point. You'll probably be better at it than I am, but it's quite easy as long as you just take your time and use a nice small needle and your end from where you fastened off. And I have definitely found it easier since I have been attaching my um, pieces to the main part using some pins or using some yarn or just a couple of stitches so I'd attach it in one spot attach it in the other and then sew along to keep it in place I definitely find that's a lot easier and then go from the ear to the head from the ear to the head or from the arm to the body to the arm to the body all the way along and then once you have done that you want to weave all of your ends nice and securely into the inside of your bear so pull those arm, so pull all of those ends through nice and securely into the inside and make sure that when you are weaving these ends in on the top of the ears and on the bottom of the arms that you pull those ends from the magic circle tight and that you weave them in at the ends nice and securely and then bring them into the inside of the bear. 
So then once you have done that, the very last thing that we need to do is add the face. And I will show you how to do that. So we are now going to add the face to our bears and you can add whatever face you like, but I have done mine like this. So I just have two eyes and a little nose. I didn't work a mouth or anything. I tried it, but I didn't feel like it fit it very well. So I just have two eyes and then a little nose and it's really easy to do. And I have already added the face to this one. So I'm just going to show you on the back of his head but obviously when you're doing yours, you want to put it on the front. So what you want to do is work out where your eyes are going to go. And I like to put, go down the center like this and then go two stitches either side that center line for my eyes. So I have five stitches in between my eyes. So I'm going to come around to the back here, go down the center and I want mine about here. So I'm going to go one and two and then into the next stitch you want to go in and then out through just one stitch like that. And then you want to pull your yarn through. So I have just a scrap piece of black yarn here, which I have thread through my needle and pull it through, leaving a little end down there. And you just want to go around this one stitch two or three times until you feel like your eyes are big enough, until the eye is big enough. So I'm going to come back down in through the same stitch down the bottom and then up and out through the same stitch and pull it through once more and do that two or three times until you have the right size. So I'm going to pull this through and make sure that this end on the bottom doesn't get tangled up. So there I have one and I'm going to do that again in through the same stitch down the bottom and up and out through the same stitch at the top and pull it through and you have to be really, really careful that you're not picking up any stuffing. And now you could leave it like this, just with two loops around that stitch, or you could do a third loop, which is what I'm going to do. So there, we have gone around that stitch three times, and now you want to finish off this eye by going in through this stitch at the top and then going out somewhere else in the head and pull that yarn through and then do the same thing for this bottom piece here. You want to go in and then out somewhere else in the head, thread that needle, thread that yarn, sorry, through the needle and then pull it out somewhere else and then your eye will probably become sunken a little bit but you can just pull that yarn out until you're happy with it and there we have made the first eye and then you want to make the second eye in the same way so we're going down the center here and then across two stitches and then do the eye in the next stitch and you should have five stitches in between each eye and it's definitely important that you do have those five stitches so one, two, three, four, five, five stitches between each eye. And that way, when you do the nose, it will be centered between the two eyes. So go ahead and work that second one. There we have made those two eyes and now we can move on and make the nose. So you want to take another scrap of black yarn and thread it through your needle. And our nose is made over three stitches in between the eyes. So what I did with this one is I went down one row. So you can see I went down one row or one round and then I have my nose along the next round. So I'm going to go down one and I'm going to count in one stitch. You should have five stitches here and it's made across three stitches. So I'm going to come across here and then go three stitches across like that. So we have three stitches for our nose and then pull the yarn through. So pull the yarn through and then leave a tail here to weave in. And then you want to come back around and do the same thing as you did with the eyes. 
come back around this loop so go in through that stitch and out through the same one and pull the yarn through and try to make sure you're not picking up any stuffing and I just did that same thing so I went round and round around those three stitches two or three times until I got the nose that I wanted and then you want to weave those ends nice and securely into the inside of the head just like we did with the eyes and then with these ends here you want to pull them tight and cut them off and then they will bounce back into the head and be nice and secure so there we have added the face, but you could add whatever face you want. So there we have finished crocheting our little bears. So we have done all of the parts, we have sewn him together, and we have added his face. And now the very, very last thing that we need to do, and this is completely optional, is make the little bandana. So here I have the bandanas, which I made. So I made these two little bandanas, like this. And you don't have to make these, you can, just leave them plain or if you wanted the bandanas I'll try and explain how I made them. So I made mine out of linen but they are fraying quite a lot so I would recommend that you make your bandanas out of cotton if you can or a material that doesn't fray so much. So I made mine out of linen to get this kind of rustic look but if you didn't want this frayed look then you could just use cotton and that won't fray so much. And then what I'm going to do is in a second I'm going to put the measurements for these bandanas on the screen so you can pause the video and write those measurements down and then you want to get a piece of paper and then draw out the bandana with those measurements so draw it out to scale with the measurements that I will put on the screen in a second and then cut that out and that will be your template and then you can use that paper template that you make using my measurements to cut around the fabric and then you want to sew along the edge of that bandana so sew all the way along the edge so I have folded the fabric over and sewn along the edge and I'm not very good at sewing at all as you can probably tell so I'm trying to explain it in the best way I can but if you have a different way of doing it then just go ahead and do it your way so I have folded the edge of the fabric over and then just sewn using my sewing machine all the way along the edge and then if you want you can add some cross stitch or some embroidery to your banner so with this one I just did a little cross stitch heart and then I did this embroidery with the leaves and the little flowers and this one I just did a few cross stitch pieces just to decorate it a little bit so if you use plain fabric you can do that or you could use a nice gingham or floral fabric and then not do any cross stitch or embroidery and then you can go ahead and add your little bandana to your bear so there we have finished so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it easy to follow. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more crochet videos. And when you subscribe, you should see a little button next to the subscribe button. And if you click that, you will receive notifications when I upload my video. So if you click that bell and then click it until it says show all notifications, you will see a notification when I upload a new tutorial and then you won't miss out on any of these fun crochet projects. So go ahead and subscribe and in the description box below this video I will leave a link to where you can find the written pattern for these teddy bears. So the written pattern is really handy for this one as it includes the charts so you can tick off where you are as you go along. And in the description box I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter accounts so I always like to post updates and pictures on there especially Instagram and I would love to see photos of your crochet work on there as well. So if you make these little teddies please share a photo I'd love to see them and thank you again for watching bye